Hello, everybody. We're at uh, the Daytona International Speedway, and we just held the uh, uh, the TTXGP World Championship. Uh, but one of the things we wanted to bring you was uh, the story of BEEV. Is that how you pronounce it? Okay. So we have uh, Terry Terry Hershner and Jeremiah Johnson, uh, and so they did this amazing transformation of this Zero S. Uh, motorcycle that is Terry's daily rider and a couple days ago he rode it here to the track uh, and then they started converting it and so like within a 24-hour period they converted it from a regular street bike to uh, being able to race and so we thought that would be an interesting story to tell about about how this worked out so okay let's start with you guys introducing yourselves okay I'm Terry Hershman. okay Okay. And Jeremiah? Uh, Jeremiah Johnson. I work with uh, BEV.com and um, I was going to be racing it uh, to the HP and we had some issues with our other race bike. So Terry let us cannibalize his bike to turn it into a uh, race bike instead of a regular bike. Okay. So how about if we start taking a look at it? Okay. So where do you want to start at? So let's, I guess, start with an overview shot of the bike here. Uh, about a week ago, uh, Hollywood Electrics uh, got me a uh, upgraded uh, motor controller. This is a Sefcon Gen 4 size 6. A little bit of frame modifications put it in, um, and some okay. upgraded double zero gauge uh, motor wires. Oh, those gas bike races, they're so noisy. One day they'll sound like jet engines like ours do. Yeah. Okay, so what's different about this Sevcon controller then? Uh, well, this, this is the original mounting position for the stock Sevcon, but it was a little shorter, had a, a heat sink that came down here. Um, but this one's got more thermal mass to it because it's larger, so there's actually no heat sink on here. And pushing it as hard as Jeremiah did in the race, we never even had an uh, overheating problem with the controller. Okay. It was still the and motor. you said this controller uh, spec a maximum of 600 some odd amps? 660 amps. Where the, uh, versus 420? Uh, yeah, 420 amps. Okay. So it's, a, it's over 50% more, just over okay. 50% more. Okay. And then you're running with the stock motor down here? Yeah, this is a Moto Energy a 0913 motor that was okay. uh, slightly reworked by Zero Motorcycles. Okay. Uh, and then you said you upgraded the these cables here to double zero. Yeah. Okay. So they handle more current. Um, okay. And that's basically as far as for the, what was on the race bike, what, what was um, what was upgraded. I didn't know at the time that we would be racing, but it turned out to be a good improvement. Yeah. To enter. The race. Okay. And then and then it looks like this is a custom bracket on the end here for the tail. Yeah. Um, this custom bracket was actually done ahead of time to to hold on. Uh, extra passengers and pegs, but it came in very handy for the race. It had a good spot for the button there, um, and it allowed us a custom seat which let Jay get further back on the seat, but I'll, I'll, I didn't talk more about that, but okay. as far as his rider position. Uh, yeah. Okay, now, all right, so this is another modification here. Right, this, uh, if you turn this, normally the motorcycle turns on with a key, yeah. You notice there's no, there's no key. Okay, you're going to need to talk in here. There's there's no key in the ignition right now. Yeah. So what we did is we made it so you turn this. And if you look over here real quick, you'll see the motorcycle turns on, but there's no key in the ignition. Okay. So, um, and if you go to the back taillight, you'll see the back taillight. If you see there's there's 12,000 okay. miles on, on this uh -huh. motorcycle. And Jeremiah, so, so let's say that again. There's 12,000 miles on this bike, yeah. and you were able to race with it. Yeah, and okay. it looks like, Jay, you went about 41 miles this weekend. <laughs> okay. So the blinking taillight is That's part of the rules? Rules from the TTXGP require that you can, uh, if a, a worker comes up and the bike's falling, they see this is flashing, they know that the throttle might be active. Okay. So they can come here and hit this button, 
turns that off, cuts power to the bike. Okay, okay. And so you're saying that this here is an extra seat, and then this this was set up originally for a, another passenger. Right, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two two additions actually. Okay. And then and then this uh, gas tank here is for the the uh, the hybrid mode. Is that it? The gas tank. Let me let Jay explain <laughs> that. That's actually uh, it's it has to do with how he can handle the bike around the track. Yeah, I was just joking because I understand sure. from Jay that it's really just for him to rest yeah. on. Let, let, let me let here. him explain it. Yeah, well, just setting this up for a race bike compared to a regular street bike. Um, we did put the hard tank cover on it so that I can use the tank as part of the way I ride the bike. Okay. Um, when you're getting on the brakes really hard. You squeeze the tank with your knees to help control yourself. And also when I'm hanging off the side of the bike, dragging my knee on the ground, I use my knee on the opposite side of the tank to hold my body on the bike. Yeah. So this yeah. curve right here is a very integral part of being able to handle the motorcycle at these kind of speeds that we're running compared to a street, street ride. Okay. So this, for a racing standpoint, was a very critical part for me to be able to really get the bike down low uh -huh. and drag it on the ground. Uh -huh. okay. um, also, Terry had gotten the, uh, the zero aftermarket uh, foot pegs. They are from zero themselves, but yeah. it doesn't normally come on the bike. These are passenger pegs. Okay, so the normal the foot pegs normal, go down here. Yeah, the normal foot peg is way down here. So when we lean into a corner at race speeds, we are dragging the foot pegs. Yeah. So we took those completely off, the kickstand and the foot peg. Yeah. And we just used their regular aftermarket uh, passenger pegs. Okay. These were the pegs that I sat with and used to help control the motorcycle. Okay. And for as a racer, it was higher up, gave me more of a racer seating position, and mm -hmm. we were able to move the seat back behind the gas tank to give us that racing geometry of what okay. we okay. needed to race it at these type of speeds in the water. Yeah. And then, uh, okay, so then, as long as we're down here, this part of the frame here, uh, you know, we normally don't see the frame this exposed, but is this frame, this section of the frame, is this stock or? Yep. This okay. Is, this is all stock. Normally, it's covered up with bodywork. Yeah. Typically, here I keep uh, additional chargers. They, I mounted them here. That's why I took the bodywork off. Yeah. The charger happens to fit exactly between these two frames, so okay. it gets it out a little bit. And when, with a stock foot peg position, my foot can actually go under it, and then my leg comes up above it, so it acts as like a wind guard. Okay. So, uh, you think that it's sticking out would make the aerodynamics worse. I actually found it, if anything, it makes it even slightly better. Uh -huh. um, and then, of course, we had a, the fairing was already on, but it was not well mounted. So, yeah. one of the first things we got here, you know, we made mounting brackets for a front fairing off of a Ninja 2. Okay, so these are the mounting brackets. Yeah. Another mounting bracket here. And this is a normal Ninja front fairing. Ninja 250, yeah. Okay. Uh, the headlights aren't activated, but it just it lets it lets Jay get the air can come up and go over his head. Yes. Yeah. Without this here with the stock zero headlight, even with him crouched down, the air would still come in and hit his chest. So this this helps keep him at most of the time it's about 99 miles an hour. But the stock zero is limited to 88 miles an hour. Yes. So with the new controller and the aerodynamics, he was able to maintain about 99. Okay. So, all right. So, uh, repeat that again. So, with with this fairing right. and the different controller, and you changed the gearing at all? Or? No. If we had changed the gearing, okay. we probably would have been able to maintain about 115 to 120. Yeah. Actually, I changed the stock gearing in the wrong direction. It used to have a 28 tooth front sprocket. Yeah. I changed it to a 25 for more acceleration a long time ago. Um, so actually, uh, it would have been able to go even a little faster if I had had the stock gearing on it. We, we okay. tried to get a smaller rear sprocket for the race, but um, wasn't able to get delivered to us in time, unfortunately. I think it'll probably arrive at the track tomorrow morning, okay. which won't do us much good now. Okay. So with these modifications, you were maintaining a 95 mile an hour speed or? About 99. 90, 99. Yeah. Put this on, yeah. Able to do 100 miles an hour. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you were, so to repeat that, you were able to build up your speed to about 100 miles an hour, slowly, 
Yeah, it gets to 90 miles an hour really quickly. Okay. But then it will slowly build up to 100. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fairly quickly after that. Okay. Okay. And so then. Uh, Okay, so then that's making me think of uh, Brandon and his uh, land speed record with his zero. You know, because you're talking about going almost exactly the speed he was going, but you're doing it in a race condition versus he was, okay. Yeah, he but he, you've got deeper modifications than he was doing. Um, actually, I think the riding position is kind of the difference because I believe he also had a size six, I believe. And he took his seat off, so he was sitting flat. Um, I, I, I think he had a very similar controller to um, the, only, the only difference with ours is I I would highly doubt someone going for a land speed record would have gone with the shorter gearing. Like yeah. We actually handicapped ourselves with the gearing that we put slower gearing on it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or slower gearing yeah. was already on it. Yeah. So we actually, with a stock gearing, we would have been able to go even faster okay. than what we already did. Okay. Okay. Aerodynamics above 80 miles an hour is key. Yes. In fact, the, yeah. whole, the whole reason I even started to put this on there was to extend the range. Typically okay. at 70 miles an hour, the range is about 60 miles. Uh -huh. uh, it, with the fairing on there, it bumped it up about seven to seven to eight to ten miles at okay. 70 miles an hour. Yeah, so. and that's important for you because you've been taking this bike on long-range trips. Yeah. So you were talking a minute ago about mounting the controller here. I mean, the charger the here, yeah. so that you normally ride with two chargers mounted to the frame. Uh, four right? actually. Oh, yeah. four chargers. One underneath, the front. one on each side, and one under uh, a tank bag that yeah. I have similar similar position to this, but okay. a charger underneath it. Okay. So and okay. That, that allows charging at four kilowatts versus yeah. one kilowatt. Yeah. Okay. And you've been able to do multi hundred mile trips with this bike yeah. that has a, a like a fifty mile highway speed range. Yeah. Is I've, that right? Uh, I could go about four, up to four hundred miles in a day. Uh, gone down to um, Sarasota to see Hap cycle yeah. down there and back in one day uh -huh. uh, up to Tallahassee. Okay. Uh, and I also took a long trip to, to Manchester, Tennessee. Uh -huh. uh, I had it down to Miami. I've, I've had it all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So that's amazing itself. But okay, so if we just go quickly over what you did on the bike here for the race, again for as a summary, you said you changed out the controller for uh, the Gen 6 model. Uh, and then replace the the wiring, you know, the motor wiring with double zero cables. Right. Yep. Okay. And then uh, Jeremiah and then, did a lot of suspension settings. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, let's go over. Still stock suspension. We just we have yeah. to crank everything max. Okay. Race, okay. Race okay. Race. So you wanted a stiffer suspension? Is that the idea? Yeah. And actually, if we were gonna, if we. If we knew we were going to be racing this bike, if it wasn't just a backup bike, I probably would have taken it into my suspension guys and actually uh -huh. had different springs put in and different fork oils okay. put in um, to give it even more stiffness than what it is at absolute max. Okay. But it was able to handle fairly well. Um, okay. For completely okay. stock stuff. We also took the handlebars, which typically were mounted up here, and we moved them down to here. Okay. So that helps. So that's just rotating the handlebars. Yeah. Loosening. So that's real simple. It's just loosen those loosen bolts these. and then rotate it. Yeah. And then it's down a little bit. So okay. The only problem is for street riding, you're limited then by your turning range. But for on the track, at speed, you'd never turn this much. Okay. So it didn't matter for the race. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the controls up here are stock, I assume. Uh, More stock, or less. Stock controls. We just had to shift when we moved the handlebars down. We had to reposition. The handlebars and controls okay. on the handlebars. Okay. And then the controller, you know, the the controller other than this, you know, Zero has their own control system as part of it, right? And you didn't modify that they've in any way? They've got a battery management system and they've got a main bike board and neither of those did we change. However, I did use it during uh, practice sessions and as qualifying to be able to access the batteries to see what the voltage was, also be able to see what we were temperature limited by. And if it had been the controller, we could have put a heat sink on the controller, but because it was the motor, um, if we had had a little more time, we probably could have gotten a scoop there um, uh -huh. to cool the motor down uh -huh. a little bit more, but really we were uh -huh. limited mostly by yeah. the gearing. Yeah, okay. And then you guys did this conversion in a day or so, other than... Friday afternoon? Yeah. Okay. And uh, rode it on Saturday. So your message for other zero owners is you can do this yourself. You can. Uh, give yourself more than 36 hours before race time, uh, <laughs> preferably. But um, 
it can be done in 36 hours. You know, you can ride it to the track and and be racing 36 hours later. Basically, is what we showed this weekend. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. All right.